Hello everyone! Around two years ago, we got a bunch of friends together and we showed you the story of Marcus. Goodness, it looks like someone is ready for battle. Now at that time, we had no clue as to who Marcus actually was, but Blizzard liked the video so much that not only did they come up with more stories, they even added Marcus into the game. Well, that was certainly unexpected. Within High Mountain, you can now see the legend for yourself. And the cool part is, is that since we didn't know who Marcus was, Kalis actually designed her own Marcus, and this is the one that made it into the game. With Legion, we now have one new story for Marcus, and a couple of brand new ones, so I invite you to dim the lights, sit back, and enjoy the tales. Let's start it off right with a steamy romance novel, Got Milk? So there I was, surrounded by at least a hundred murlocs. The heavily mustached man proclaimed, gesturing in a wide arc. The tawny tauren gasped in amazement. <gasps> Whatever did you do? The only thing I could do, my lovely. I brought them to justice. Marcus patted the sword resting on his thigh. Oh, with just a dagger, you are so brave. Tenda cautiously reached for the blade, but pulled her hand away at the last second. Marcus bristled. What? This is a two-handed sword, enchanted to the hilt. Perhaps not as big as you've seen, but I know a few tricks to really make it sing. Tenda smiled demurely, fluttering her enormous eyelashes. She picked up a piece of cheese and held it close to Marcus's lips. Try this. It's homemade. No, no, I'm, um, lactose intolerant. Tenda placed the cheese back into the bowl. Oh, are you sure? Does that mean you can't tolerate me? The buxom torrent stepped forward, pressing herself against Marcus. The substantial height difference placed his face squarely in her chest. Unable to see, he flailed in protest, finally finding purchase on her firm backside. His muffled apologetic sounds only made her giggle and squeeze him more tightly. Just as his other hand found her tail, the light dimmed as an imposing figure moved into the doorway. What the- Bax, no! Marcus pulled his head away and gasped for air, looking at the angry torrent with wide eyes. It's not what it looks like. Bax charged, ramming into Marcus while uttering his challenge. <laughs> You mess with the ball, you get the horns. Marcus reeled and caught himself, digging his heels into the dirt. Seizing a horn in each hand, he held the torrent's head down, fighting against his tremendous strength. Bucks forced his head up, grunting and spitting in anger, only to have it repeatedly pushed down. They locked eyes for a moment, and with a final heave of explosive force, Bucks wrenched himself free. The powerful torrent swung his arms out wide, as if to crush Marcus in a mighty hug. Blades of Light! A huge, pulsing sword thrust up from the ground between the two combatants, tearing through armor and clothing, searing the thick chest hair of Marcus and cutting a fine line into the torrent's muscular chest. Before they could move again, Thunder raised her hoof leg into the air and she brought it down with warlike force. The man and bull wobbled, clearly stunned. Stop it! Both of you! Marcus regained his composure and looked at Tonda and then to Bucks. Fur was ruffled and the bare parts of the leathery skin glistened with sweat. As they all stared one another down, the ridiculously good-looking Marcus spoke. Well, since we're mostly undressed already... The story goes on, but your good taste prevents you from reading it. Ah, good old Marcus. No situation that he can't solve with his trusted enchanted two-handed sword. Who knows where his adventures will take him next, but his tales are known all across of Azeroth, yet not everyone is keen to admit that they actually read the steamy romance novels. A good example is Professor Pollen, who offers training for mass milling, but as we go to pick up the book that's supposed to teach us this technique, we discover a strange book that stands out. It doesn't appear to be an inscription textbook at all, it's more of a... A steamy romance novel. Oh my, Professor Pollen, you delicious gnome. Didn't know you had it in ya. But the good professor says that he only reads it for the penmanship. Such curvy bees and such ample Ds. Oh yes, it's all about the bees and Ds, alright? But Pollen thinks that we might benefit from a penmanship lesson from none other than the author himself. This is either Bee Spear Shaker, found in Idaforge, or F. Stroh Bacon, found within the library in the Undercity. The famous writers have lost their passion though. They just can't get into the voice of the character anymore. Perhaps it's time to pass on the torch, as they decide to teach us how to write our very own steamy romance novels. We can now let our mind wander, use our experience in the field, and create our own curvy bees and ample Ds, starting off with a steamy romance novel, Elven Bondage. The weight of his fist crashed into the side of the ogre's face with a meaty funk. 
The bulbous goon teetered for a moment like a marionette cut loose from its strings before falling into a heap atop his unconscious sibling. The Dragtooth brothers may have been feared throughout the land, but courage of Sir Crispin Greymane had won the day once again. The brave hero had no time to pause and to admire his handiwork, not when Lady Moonshade remained shackled to the wall. Greymane strode to her side, each step as graceful as a ram of the Moreau. You are unhurt, my lady. I trust these brutes did not cause you harm. She breathed a relief sigh as he broke away the bonds that held wrists and ankles. Your swift arrival saw to that, noble champion. She answered. The night elf's glowing eyes beamed upon him like stars on a cloudless night. The greatest suffering was enduring the ogre's lecherous glances. My leather armor was damaged during my capture, and several pieces seemed to have fallen away. She made a half-hearted attempt to cover the bareness of her midriff. Of course a knight performing his duty would not notice such a quandary, he assured her, taking her hands and lightly massaging her bruised wrists as she rose to her feet. Standing her full height, Lady Moonshade was at least three heads taller than her savior, if not more. Forgive me, good sir, but I cannot discern if you are the shortest human I have ever met or the tallest dwarf. His white teeth flashed through the thickness of his beard like snow caps on a mountain ridge. I like to think I'm the best of both, good lady. He gestured toward the doorway. A spacious carriage awaits to convey ye back home. I assure ye, my driver will not disturb us as a personal essay to your recovery. I will do my best to ensure the ride is to your liking. A playful smile danced about her lips. I hope I can rely on your driver's discretion. I fear the rest of my fragile armor might fall away at any moment. The ruggedly handsome knight bowed and flashed a confident wink. Why, my dear, I'm positively counting on it. Oh, Sir Greymane. She swooned, falling into his arms. He guided her toward the waiting coach, stepping over the unconscious ogres on the floor. The story continues for many more chapters, laden with vehicle metaphors. Heroic and dashingly charming, Sir Crispin Greymane saves the day once again. And for those wondering, I don't believe this is related to Gen Greymane. Let's be real here, he is way too charming for that. Now the next tale takes us from riding a carriage to the open sea in a steamy romance novel, Waves of Desire. Lord Greysbane stared out through the porthole, watching the waves rise and fall in time with the aching that tormented him inside. How long had she kept him waiting here in the cabin? He felt the keen edge of his desire growing more insistent, spurring his impatience. At last, the cabin door swung open. She paused in the doorway, torchlight playing about the hem of her low-cut silken gown as the shadows danced upon her pale cinderai skin. Am I late, my lord? She asked, chewing on the fullness of her lower lip. He found himself speechless as his jaw dropped to the floor. He knelt to pick it up, rising as he snapped it back into place. Some things... Are worth waiting for, Lady Sunskin. He held out his hand, beckoning her closer. For a moment, a look of uncertainty crossed the highborn's brow. Her shallow breaths hung heavy with hesitation and longing. She brushed her fingertips across the cold, pallid skin of his cheek. I hope your desiccation doesn't hinder your enthusiasm, Lord Gravesbane. He took her hand and kissed it with his one good lip. Fear not, darling. My jaw isn't quite what it used to be, however, my tongue remains as limber as ever. Oh, Lord Gravesbane. She swooned, falling into his arms. He relished the warmth of her skin as he guided her toward the leather harness that was hanging over his bed. The story continues for many more chapters, laden with porthole puns. I wonder if this is the same character from the very first story who's met a terrible fate and found himself turned into the undead. It's also possible that this is an entirely different character, of course, related to the two different teachers that teach you how to write these romance novels. But I like to believe that the spirit of Greymane could not find rest, not while there are still families to be brought closer together. That tale is told within a steamy romance novel, Nightborn of the Living Dead. She accepted a chalice of wine with a better for long lashes. I really shouldn't, Lord Gravesbane. My mother would never approve. Nonsense, my dear Alonia. You are 10,000 years old. I'm sure your mother would forgive you for indulging just this once. <laughs> it's not the wine, my lord. Rather, it's the notion of a nightborn spending her evening in the company of someone so... Charming? He offered. I was going to say decrepit. My morals are not quite that far gone, I assure you. He replied, his good eye drifting up and down the length of her flowing gown. I'm sure your mother will find me most endearing. Oh, would I? 
asked a sharp voice. Crispin Grishbane turned to see another nightborn framed within the doorway. Though her attire was less inviting than her daughter's, her face and body were a mirror of Alonia's own. He approached and bowed, hastily kicking aside the kneecap that had clattered to the floor. I am Lord Crispin Gravesmane, at your service. Do I have the honor of meeting Lady Marina? You do. She answered coldly, casting a harsh glance toward Elonia. I fear you are toying with me, good lady. He smiled, careful to hold his jaw in place. Surely you must be Elonia's sister, not her mother. A faint blush flashed across Lady Marina's cheeks. You flatter me, my lord. It has been centuries since anyone has mistaken us for siblings. Nonsense! He insisted, taking her hand and guiding her toward the couch. He sat down between the two indigo-skinned elves. Perhaps after we share a bit of wine, we can find out what else you and your daughter have in common. Oh, Lord Gravesbane. Marina swooned. She took Alonia's hand, sharing a further smile with her daughter. Perhaps it is time we introduced you to the true secrets of the Sheldurai. Subsequent pages seem to be scribbled over in nightborn profanities. And there ends the new steamy romance novels. Perhaps for the best, since I don't know where we're gonna go from here, but I can't wait to find out. Hopefully, we'll find more steamy romance novels available in the future. Perhaps there's going to be a team up of Marcus, Grace Bane, and perhaps Queen Ajara and the Old God Nazoff to the mix. I'm sure that that could make for some interesting steamy adventures. I want to give a big, big thank you to everyone who was involved with this project, who were kind enough to offer their time and effort to bring these new stories to life. The beautiful video that you've just seen, that's created by the amazingly talented Kalis, who also made the previous Steamy Romance video and provided a voice for Alonia. Check out her channel if you're interested in more machinima. I'd recommend either the Tides of War video or the story of Eva Sarkov. They are amazing. Alex was kind enough to return as Marcus, and his brother Luz was the deviously charming Lord Gravesbane. You know them best as Fatboss TV, your number one source for raid guides, and these days also running laps around the city of Dalaran. Coltrane provided his deep sexy voice for the tar and backs, and you can find the man behind it over on Twitter at the Coltrane. Nixium was a ruggedly dwarfish friend Sir Greymane, and on his channel you can also find some awesome machinima, but there's also discussion videos, the true story behind characters, and recently his attempt to murder his friend Little Ben. Silver Latomi, she was our seductive Torrentanda, and on her channel you can find beautiful and amazing parody songs similar to Charm's channel, who provided the voice for not only Lady Moonshade, but also Lady Sunskin and Lady Marina. She's quite a lady herself, so if you're looking for some new channels to watch, check out all these amazing people, since they're well worth your time. And that's us done for today, ladies and gentlemen. I'll leave you with an alternate take on the Gut Milk storyline, since Charm did it in such a different way that we're actually wondering, like, which voice are we going to use for this? So in the end, why not just use both? Right then, as always, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, guys, see ya! Let's start it off right with a steamy romance novel, Gut Milk. So there I was, surrounded by at least a hundred murlocs. The heavily mustached man proclaimed, gesturing in a wide arc. The tawny tauren gasped in amazement. Whatever did you do? The only thing I could do, my lovely. I brought them to justice. Marcus patted the sword resting on his thigh. Oh, with just a dagger? You are so brave. Tenda cautiously reached for the blade, but pulled her hand away at the last second. Marcus bristled. What? This is a two-handed sword, enchanted to the hilt. Perhaps not as big as you've seen, but I know a few tricks to really make it sing. Tenda smiled demurely, fluttering her enormous eyelashes. She picked up a piece of cheese and held it close to Marcus's lips. Try this. It's homemade. No, no, I'm, um, lactose intolerant. Tenda placed the cheese back into the bowl. Oh, are you sure? Does that mean you can't tolerate me? The buxom torrent stepped forward, pressing herself against Marcus. The substantial height difference placed his face squarely in her chest. Unable to see, he flailed in protest, finally finding purchase on her firm backside. His muffled apologetic sounds only made her giggle and squeeze him more tightly. Just as his other hand found her tail, the light dimmed as an imposing figure moved into the doorway. What the- <gasps> Box! No! Marcus pulled his head away and gasped for air, looking at the angry torrent with wide eyes. It's not what it looks like. Bex charged, ramming into Marcus while uttering his challenge. <laughs> You mess with the ball, you get the horns. Marcus reeled and caught himself, digging his heels into the dirt. Seizing a horn in each hand, he held the torrent's head down, fighting against his tremendous strength. 
Bucks forced his head up, grunting and spitting in anger, only to have it repeatedly pushed down. They locked eyes for a moment, and with a final heave of explosive force, Bucks wrenched himself free. The powerful torrent swung his arms out wide, as if to crush Marcus in a mighty hug. Blades of light! A huge, pulsing sword thrust up from the ground between the two combatants, tearing through armor and clothing, searing the thick chest hair of Marcus and cutting a fine line into the torrent's muscular chests. Before they could move again, Tanda raised her hoof leg into the air and she brought it down with warlike force. The man and bull wobbled, clearly stunned. Stop it! Both of you! Marcus regained his composure and looked at Tonda and then to Bucks. Fur was ruffled and the bare parts of the leathery skin glistened with sweat. As they all stared one another down, the ridiculously good-looking Marcus spoke. Well, since we're mostly undressed already... The story goes on, but your good taste prevents you from reading it.